All right, I'm going to do uh, some of the odd problems on Worksheet 3D and Worksheet 3E. There are only five on each worksheet. I think I'll do two on 3D and I'll do two on 3E. All right, so let's take a look. For 3D, if two lines are cut by a transversal, then should be two parallel lines. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent, for instance. Angle 3 and angle 6 would be congruent, and angle 4 and angle 5 would be congruent. And corresponding angles are congruent. That means same position. So 2 and 5, 3 and 8, 1 and 6, 4 and 7. Those pairs would all be congruent because they're corresponding. And we're going to use those parallel line theorems today in proving a couple of these. I'm going to do 1 and 3 for you. Okay, let's take a look. Given line segment AC is parallel to line segment BD and line segment CB bisects line segment AD. So, of course, we have to write that and we have to write kind of small. They don't give us much room on these worksheets. CB bisects AD. Okay, now that we've written that down, it's given, we go back and to show that AC is parallel to BD, we put these little arrowheads that tells us they're parallel. Okay, and CB bisects AD, so CB bisects AD, which tells us that AE is congruent to ED. All right, what else do we know? Okay, well, parallel lines, a transversal, we know that C is congruent to angle B. Angle C is congruent to angle B. And we also know that vertical angles are congruent. Or, you know what, let's stick with alternate interior angles. And I'm going that way because we know that both sets of alternate interior angles are congruent. Angle A and angle D. And you'll notice that's the only uh, other uh, definition they give of, over here or reason so it's kind of you got to be careful when you have these proofs that are already partly filled in got to make sure you put everything in the right spot okay so now we're going to say that angle a is congruent to angle D and we're going to say that angle C is congruent to angle B how do we know that? Alternate interior angles are congruent. A and D are alternate interior angles. C and B are alternate interior angles because these two lines or segments are parallel. Okay, so hopefully you can see right now we're using angle angle side. And I just covered my two sets of angles. Now we just have to say the side. And we're going to say that line segment AE is congruent to line segment ED. And how do we know that? Definition of segment bisector. And now we have our side done, and we can now say that triangle CEA is congruent to, okay, look, we went C, no line to E, and then one line to A. So no line, one line, so BED, triangle BED, and that's because of angle, angle, side. Now, just to show you, we could have also used vertical angles, right? We could have said vertical angles were congruent, and we could have done angle, side, angle just as well, or angle, angle, side. So we knew a lot about these two triangles. Okay, moving on to number three. Okay, so given line segment BE is parallel to line segment CD. So line segment BE is parallel to line segment CD. What else do we know? We know that line segment AE is parallel to line segment BD. Okay, ah, we also know that B is the midpoint of AC. And 
That's given. All right, let's see what that tells us. We know that BE is parallel to CD. We also know that AE is parallel to BE. So just like with congruency lines, we put two to distinguish the difference. Okay, and we know that B is the midpoint of AC, which tells us at least that those guys, okay? All right, so this one's a little trickier because we got to decide what's the parallel lines, what is the transversals. So if we look at, I'm going to get another piece of paper here, and we look at just these two parallel lines, okay? And we say, okay, well, if we're looking at these two guys as parallel lines and we take this, okay, well, now we have alternate interior angles, but that's not really, that's not there, okay? So that doesn't work for us. So what else do we know? Well, let's take a look at AE, okay? And they're cut by, um, let's see, if they were cut by this, this angle here, okay? You look at it this way, AC is a transversal. Don't we now see that these two angles are congruent. Can't we say that angle A and angle D, B, C are congruent? Because they're parallel lines cut by this transversal. Well, that tells us that these two angles are congruent. Okay? And now let's take a look at EB being parallel. Okay? And now cut by this transversal. Well, it shows us that these two guys are congruent, right? Which means angle A. A, B, E, and angle B, C, D are also congruent, okay? So we can say that these two guys are congruent. We can't say they're, they're right angles. They kind of look like it, but we can't say that, okay? So you have to be careful with the parallel lines. You have to figure out which are the parallel lines and what is the transversal. All right, so let's go on. It looks like we're going to use angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So let's start off with the angles since it's up to us. So we'll say angle A is congruent to, we got to use three letters here, angle D, B, C. We can also say <clears throat> that angle A, B, E is congruent to angle B, C, D. And both of those are because, um, we'll say, corresponding angles are congruent. Okay. So that gives us the two angles. So if we're keeping track like we normally do, we'll put angle, angle, side angle, excuse me, angle, side angle, and we got the two angles covered. Now we just got to show... The side. So we're going to say line segment AB is congruent to line segment BC, and that's definition of midpoint. Okay, so now we've covered the two angles, and we've shown that the two sides are congruent. There's one set of angles, two sets of angles, and the side. So now we can say that triangle EBA is congruent to triangle, now let's be careful, EBA congruent to triangle DCB. And how do we know that? Angle side angle postulate. Okay. All right, I'm gonna leave two four and five for you to do. This one's an error correction, so this is a good good challenge for you, so I want to make sure you have a chance to do that. All right, two more. Let's go to problem one here. In this case, we're talking about perpendicular segments, so BA and DC are going to be the perpendicular segments. So let's see what we got here. Probably, remember, perpendicular lines means right angles, so we're probably going to maybe use some hypotenuse leg here. All right, looking at number one. Given AB is 
parallel, perpendicular to DC, and BC is congruent to AC. All right, so let's see. Let's get the given down. AB is perpendicular to DC, and we know that BC is congruent to AC. Let me make sure we our lines, and let's put in the information we know. Well, we now know that those are two right angles, so we've got two right triangles, and we know that BC is congruent to AC. All right, and we also know they share DC, so this is a hypotenuse leg, isn't it? All right, so, and the hypotenuse is already done for us. Okay, so check, got that done. All right, definition of parallel, uh, definition of perpendicular lines, okay? So that is, we're gonna say that angle BDC and angle ADC are congruent right angles. So angle B D, C, and angle ADC are congruent right angles. Okay, a lot of shortcuts. Congruent right angles. And that's the definition of perpendicular lines. Now we're going to say that line segment DC is congruent to line segment DC. And definition is or the reason is reflexive property of congruency. And so now we can say that triangle BDC is congruent to triangle, let's say BDC is congruent to triangle ADC. How do we know that? Hypotenuse leg. We showed the hypotenuses are congruent or we were actually given that information, but we also showed that DC is a leg. Okay, one more. All right, this one looks tricky here. It's kind of a bow tie, vertical angles maybe, I don't know. Let's see, that line should be there. All right, AC is perpendicular to CB. AD is perpendicular to db. And we know that AE is congruent to BE. All right, a lot of given information here, so let's make sure we get it all down. So AC is perpendicular to CB, so that's a right triangle. And we know that D, let's see, we know that AD is perpendicular to db so that's a right triangle so it looks like we got two right triangles angle one triangle one and triangle two so let's see what else we know we know that ae is congruent to be so that looks like those are the hypotenuse of our right triangle okay so we got the hypotenuse part down which is good that was given So again, we need to say that angle ACE is congruent. Now let's be careful. ACE is congruent to angle BDE. And that reason is, uh, oh, I should say, and right, oh, I wanted to write, I like what I wrote up here, but these two angles are congruent right angles. And I'm going to put and right angles because we want to be show that they are right triangles so that we can definition of perpendicular lines because we want to show that they are not only congruent but they're also right angles which create right triangles okay so we've got the hypotenuse down we've showed that they're, they're right angles so now we just need to show that the, one of the legs are congruent, okay? And uh, let's see what else. We, oh, you know what? We're not going to be able to use that here because we don't have any information about the legs. We don't know anything about AC or BD or CE or DE. But you know what we do know? Vertical angles. Okay, so we can say angle AEC 
is congruent to angle A, I went A, E, C, so I gotta go B, E, D. And that is vertical angles are congruent. And so now by angle, angle, side, we can say the two triangles are congruent. So we actually didn't use hypotenuse leg here. So now we can say that triangle BDE is congruent to triangle. So we went BDE, triangle ACE. And we know that because of angle, angle, side congruency postulate okay and like I said uh, I said this last uh, class session even though it's a right triangle we don't always use hypotenuse leg it's usually what we first look towards and I was looking that way at the beginning because they told us what the hypotenuses were congruent but we didn't have any other information about a leg so we had to switch over to angle angle side is congruent to angle angle side all right, I hope that helps you guys get going. I think that was a good one to show that you have to really do some investigating. I was looking at hypotenuse leg, but then I discovered I didn't have enough information for hypotenuse leg, so I had to switch gears and use vertical angles. All right, good luck.